So before this movie came out, I had actually never seen Logan. I didn't know if I could at the time because my experience with this film series was very limited, but I thought I might as well check it off my watch list before finally seeing these two team up. So I finally watched it for the first time, and yeah, it really is one of the greatest comic book movies ever made, but I don't need to tell you why if you've already seen it. Now, I start off this review by saying all this because despite finally knowing the full context of these events, it still would not change how I viewed this movie. Now, I can say that I didn't have a good time with this one. The action sequences are brutally fun, the soundtrack goes surprisingly hard, and I do like how despite existing under the Disney umbrella, it still maintains the humor and classic spirit of the character that we've all come to know. But with all that said, I still found this movie pretty dull and kind of tiring. Which I've come to expect from the MCU at this point, but not from Deadpool. Maybe I'm a little biased because I loved the first two movies as a teen, but as an adult who's mostly grown out of this style of humor, I found the comedy in this one to be really hit or miss. I occasionally got some laughs out of this, but they honestly more often than not came from the side characters. The biggest laughs I got from Deadpool himself were during the opening credits, but that's to be expected, and to be fair, the opening credits were very well done and very funny. Most of DP's jokes in this one feel stale, obvious, and again, tired. Ryan Reynolds still kicks ass in this role, but after so much overexposure, I feel like there's not much left for him to accomplish. Going back to the side characters, the ones from the last two movies are incredibly underused, especially Vanessa, who probably shouldn't have been brought back at the end of the second movie if they were just going to make her an even bigger plot device than before. The plot itself was fine, but very unfocused, and the stakes feel significantly lower than before. I wasn't all that invested in Wade's story to save his universe and his friends because, again, they don't even do much in the story. The villain was okay, but even with her insane power, Hours, I still didn't find her as memorable as someone like Cable, who was only an antagonist for the first half of the second movie. I don't know how she compares to her comic counterpart, and I don't really care because that's not really my field. I do not go to these movies for accuracy. I go because it's fun to watch actors in suits fighting each other. You know, most of the time. The TVA stuff was pretty uninteresting to me as well. I haven't seen all of Loki, but unlike a certain other Marvel movie, I didn't feel like I needed to watch one of the shows beforehand to understand how their place in the story worked. Also, Matthew McFadyen as Mr. Paradox was a delight to watch, even though he came out looking pretty pathetic by the end. Now, I've mostly talked about DP's role in this movie, but how is our other title hero, Wolverine? Um... Pretty good, honestly. Not amazing, and his story definitely carries some flaws, but Hugh Jackman's latest take on the character is still a fascinating and entertaining one. I really like how they didn't ultimately ruin the ending of Logan by bringing him back from the dead, but instead pulled him out of a different universe. Even with the classic yellow suit on, I could still take him seriously and understand his pain. His background and tragic past were admittedly very basic, but I think Jackman really sold it all with his performance. Anyways, that's all of my non-spoiler thoughts, so skip to this time frame to avoid cameo reveals. Okay, three, two, one. The cameos were shockingly not bad. I'd even go as far as to say they were neat additions. It wasn't satisfying fan service like No Way Home, but it still wasn't as pandering as Multiverse of Madness, so that's cool. As soon as I saw Chris Evans appear on screen, I immediately knew he was playing Johnny Storm. I saw the Mad Max-esque vehicle with the number four on it, and I already suspected that they wouldn't actually bring Cap back, but that didn't make the twist any less surprising or funny. It was cool to see Blade and Elektra, even if I've never seen their movies before, and Channing Tatum as Gambit was actually pretty funny in his first on-screen appearance as the character. I knew Laura was going to appear in this movie, but I was even more excited to see her after finally watching Logan, and I think their scene by the fire was probably the most investing scene in the movie, at least for me. Despite my problems with other parts of the movie, this does feel like a good way to close out this era of comic book films. I'm honestly glad this movie exists, just for that reason. Much like how James Gunn gave us a beautiful tribute to say goodbye to the Guardians with Volume 3, the team behind this movie gave us a proper send-off to the Fox-era heroes. That's not to say this movie is on the same level of quality as the Guardians, not even close. But as a final tribute to these characters, I think it mostly paid off. We just had a whole movie to sit through to get to those moments. But I'll admit, even though I'm not nostalgic for these movies, the montage during the credits did get me in the feels. Overall, while I am disappointed with how many flaws I thought this had, I still had a fun time, and I would recommend it if you're really interested in seeing it. I'm gonna give this movie a 6 out of 10. But again, that's just me, because I know a lot of people are really digging this one. Anyways, now I'm gonna go watch The Proposal. Okay, bye!